and in the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing, God. And we thank you for the move to the new building, God. Yeah. Consecrate that building. Drive out everything that's before. Lord, let it be new. All things become new in the name of Jesus. As we go forth in this ministry, we thank you for the work. Let it go smoothly, Lord. We need willing workers. I thank you for everything, God. We just thank you for the music ministry. We thank you for the sound ministry, God. We thank you for the deacons. We thank you for the children's ministry. We thank you for the couple's ministry, God. Thank you for what you're doing. This is so exciting, God. We're in our midst, God. We just thank you, God. Bless each and everyone. Let the word go forth today. Minister to our hearts. Let the seed be planted deep in our hearts, God. Let it bring forth great fruit. This we pray. And every other prayer in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. Give a hand to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give your heart Lord, that the altar. Don't take it back to your seat. That's right. Leave Go it at the altar. in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Yeah. Yes, At this time, we're going to hear from our choir for a final sermon and solo, and then after that, you will hear the voice of Dr. Richard Clark, and before yes, they sir. get started, let me introduce Dr. Clark. Dr. Clark is a chief angel yes, of the Temple Deliverance Worship Center. Yes, He's a man that's fully equipped, yes, fully prepared to deliver God's word yes, to a waiting yes. congregation. Yes, so, by the elevation of your right hands, repeat after me. <laughs> Pastor Clark. Pastor Clark. Clark. Preach loud. Preach loud. Spare not. Spare not. Pastor Clark. Preach loud. Spare not. Pastor Clark. Preach loud. Spare not.
That's love. Oh, man. Come on, put your hands together for our praise team. commission in Matthew he said go ye but the original translation it says as you are going teach oh, in John 5 39 he uses one term and he says search it suggests the idea in the world of academia that he has given us a responsibility to do more than just rubbing our elbows against the school wall, the college wall, the university wall, the, univer the, the, the state wall, or the seminary wall. Search simply means to expand your horizon, to expand your learning opportunity. Search have the idea to take the scaffold of faith, to cut open something you wouldn't normally see just by opening up the Bible. But it's digging deeper to find out the hidden mystery of God's divine word. Thank God we have leaders here, we have clergy here, we have deacons here, we have individuals that want to go beyond just the surface. And that's what it means by search. search. It means to analyze, to pursue, to dig, to cut over. Can I just say this? Oftentimes, you will never catch fish in shallow waters. You have to dive deeper, drill a little longer, and sometimes Jesus will even tell you to do things you don't normally want to do. And sometimes you need to move from fishing in this area and cast to the other side. Because it's only when you go to the other side do you see great fish. God bless you. Let me just give you my text, and this is going to be my 15-minute sermon. And then we're going to have fun. We're going to announce our graduates. If you'll stand just very briefly. I want to take time out to thank all of our guests here today, and especially um, Brother John. He's here for the first time, and God bless you. Welcome to the temple. He's a royal guest, and this is what it's all about. Um, if the church is going to grow, glow, and go, it's because our members are going to do like the Samaritan woman did after she met Jesus. See, if you never met Jesus, you have no reason to bring someone else, but if you met Jesus, you can't help but to have the case of the can't help it. Right. And you'll say, come to my worship. The Samaritan woman said, come see a man that told me everything I ever do. <laughs> so God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, and you welcome um, John. Amen. We have another guest? Okay, Int introduce your guest, please. She was here at the rehearsal yesterday. God bless you. That's Mother Barbara's guest. It's Janet? Shannon, welcome to the temple, Shannon. 
God bless you. God bless you. <clears throat> if you'd open up your Bibles to a very familiar portion of Scripture out of First Peter, the third chapter, the fifteenth verse, I was going to continue my last Sunday's message, but when I found out there's a graduation service, I have to change gears, and I'm going to continue Genesis on next Sunday. But First Peter. 3 and 15, when you have it, just say amen. amen. It reads as follows. It starts with, I like that killer conjunction, but it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready to give an answer, always to give an answer to every man that asked of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yeah. You may be seated. Amen. <clears throat> Graduates, Facebook family, Amen. I would like to use to kind of umbrella this particular subject with, and this text with, and I want to use one word. One word. I want the youngest that are in here as well as the eldest that are in here the graduates and non-graduates alone. I don't care who you are, if you have matriculated, or if you have not matriculated, this one word is for everyone in the house. Okay. And that is accountability. Uh, right. Won't you say that with me? Accountability. accountability. <laughs> the Bible says right here emphatically, but sanctify the Lord in your heart. That's for the accountability. Sanctify suggests that we move from dogma to doctrine to duty. Mm -hmm. Sanctify suggests a set apart are moving from the secular to the spiritual. Yeah. Moving from the mundane to the mission yeah. to the majesty. It says, but sanctify the Lord in your heart. Let me just run with you real briefly in the next 15 minutes and talk about accountability. In other words, we have a decision to make. Being a Christian or serving God or matriculating in education is one thing, but the whole bottom line, when, 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 when you put the rubber when it meets the road, is that you have to be accountable. Right. It's sad to say that if you go to a ch church and you just go to a church and you're never accountable, then you'll never be able to give an account of your stewardship. Uh -huh. But every member has the responsibility to be accountable. I'm praying one day that here in the temple, that we would choose as we move to the new location on next week, that we would decide to find in our church an accountability partner, yeah. someone we could be accountable to. Amen. It's no more free lo loafing. No more go as you please. It's, it's no more business as usual. I believe that God wants us to be accountable. We need to find one person that we can talk to that we can open up to, that we can be vulnerable to, mm. and say, brother or sister, this is me, and I need to call and talk to you. How many of you today need someone to talk to? Amen. Oh, look at the hands going Amen. up. And maybe for those of you that didn't raise your hand, maybe it's all right with you. And, and I tell you, just keep on living, because you're going to find out one day that you're going to need someone to talk to. Can I, just, can I just roll the scroll as I roll down the screen and, and lift up the screen? And, and I want you to know, everyone needs a partner. Amen. That's partnership. And if you don't believe me, for those of you that is my age, you know, you know about Amos and Andy, right? right. Yeah. Amos had Andy. Batman had Robin. The Green Hornet had Cato. Uh -huh. Oh, you better talk to me. Uh -huh. Elijah had Elijah. Uh -huh. 
David had Jonathan. But who does Jesus have? Jesus said that, that I was wounded in the house of my friend. Wow. And, and when it came to be accountability, Jesus said, I had nowhere to leave my head because, the, because I'm looking for a person that have loved me one day and they left me the next day. I look for the individual that said yes to me yesterday, but where are they are today? Wow. It's sad to see that this, the church is the only place where we look for those that have been called out and commissioned and, and set aside. It's sad to see the church is the only institution where members of this flock decide to come when they want to come and stay home when they want to stay. But it's funny, we go to work. I don't care how sick we get, we go to work. We, we click on a clock and we try not to miss work. Is your work more important than the ecclesia of your church? Where's your accountability? Can I just say this? Many times the reason why we suffer is because we have put the cart before the heart. That's it, that's it. And, and we have not made Jesus a priority it, of our it, lives. And the reason why we stomp our toe, we fall down, mm -hmm. but the song I can say, we get up again. That's right, that's right. And the reason why we keep um, hitting the glass ceiling and the reason why we can't go anymore, the reason why we can't swim any farther is because we refuse to put priorities in perspective and unless you recognize God as the one that sits high and look down low, unless you recognize God as Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, we will never achieve the success and the prosperity and the victory that God has for us. I know sometimes, if you're talking about being sick, can I talk about being sick just for a moment? I shouldn't be here right now. I've been on dialysis for six years. Going to dialysis Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, four hours a day, but I go there as if nothing has happened. I can't wait to get unplugged from the dialysis machine because I tell them I got work to do. Nothing going to separate me from the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't care what happens in this body. The devil might try to knock me down, but I'm not out. The devil might try to move me to the left, but I move to the right. The devil might try to back me up, but I keep moving forward. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can have this whole world, but just give me Jesus. You can have all the money, but just give me Jesus. I'd rather have riches, riches in Jesus than silver and gold. Hallelujah. Thank God for accountability. I thought my alarm clock woke me up this morning, but it wasn't my alarm clock something. It was an accountability clock. I got up, clothes in my right mind. I got pep in my step, God in my stride. He says, accountability. But sanctify the Lord. That simply means be ready to be a true apologist. An apologist, if you've been in school any length of time, you know it's a defender of your faith. That's it, that's it. I just have a question for you this morning. How many of you are ready to defend the faith? Oh, look at God. How many of you are ready to stand up even when the body say, sit down? How many of you ready to shout even though you don't feel like shouting? That's what accountability will do. The needle in accountability is always 
at neutral, which is zero. Teach it, teach it. And I'm gonna ask you a question. If you move that needle of accountability any degree to the right, that lets you know there's growth. There's persistency. There's partnership. But if it goes the opposite way, negative one, negative two, negative three, and some of us are in the negative, and you realize why you can't get a blessing? You realize why doors are not opening for you? God is a miracle worker. Yes, Lord. And how many needs a miracle this morning? Yes, Lord. Let me just talk about accountability, and I'm going to take my seat. Every letter in accountability represents something. Yes. I'm going to give you every word that every letter of accountability is. I'm going to come back and give you a scripture, and I'm going to take my seat, and we're going to talk to the graduates. Every letter in accountability represents our behavior. Can I say it again? Every letter in accountability represents our behavior. And some of you are here today because you've had a bad week. Some of you are here today because you've had a rough week. Some of you are here today because you said, I need to stay home, but I need to press my way through. Amen. Can I tell you about the blessing and just pressing? Yes. When, when you press your way through, yes. you ever, I'm reminded of this woman that had an issue of blood for a number of years. How many years? How many years? Twelve. For a number of years, twelve years. But the Bible says that she needed to get to Jesus. But but she couldn't get to him because of the press. How many of you have opportunities you've been praying for and you say, well, he's not going to answer, he never answered, and you just give up? You need to keep on praying. You need to keep on persevering. You need to keep on pursuing. The Bible says that that woman pressed her way through. And not only did she press her way through, when she made it to Jesus, she did something that indiv any individual should have never done, and that was to touch Jesus. Wow. That's right. Her need outweighed her circumstances. Yeah. Her need outweighed any rationality of politics. She said, if I could just get to Jesus and touch him, I know that I will be made whole. Yes. 